Hello, Alice. Yes, how are you going? I'm good, thank you. That's good. Oh, I'm struggling a bit, Dale, because um, I'm struggling um, to find out where I can make my complaint to, um, having been framed by government conspiracy. Now, um, I've been called paranoid and delusional um, for this belief or this knowledge that I have. Um, however, after hospitalisation and a suicide attempt, which was quote unquote fatal, um, I've ne there's now a new cover up to um, cover up that death and save me from any prosperity or voice or um, advocacy. And I need whistleblower status because I, I simply can't go to the police. I've been blocked from AFP's servers. My former partner is an ASIO employee who swore to ruin my life, who owes me half a million dollars. I haven't got a cent. I've been scapegoated and um, oppressed for so long, it's getting really tiring. I need um, an acknowledgement from an official body that's independent of, um, well, I guess everything's under the government, isn't it? So, I mean, what is the best methodology that I go forward with you guys and um, take forward this complaint? Well, can I just interject? Where could this oppression be coming from? If if. Well, I'm doing better than that because I've contacted not only, hang on, let me go through these hundreds of emails I've got open at the moment, um, as well as, look, can, can you just bear with me for a second? I actually have um, a disability and um, it's partly the reason I'm framed. Um, and to be very blunt, I've got psychiatric disabilities and have no psychiatrist so and I haven't got a doctor because I've been blacklisted I've been blacklisted from the mental health complaints commissioner I've been blacklisted by AFCA I've been rejected workers compensation it's now at the AAT which is um I've already called the attorney general's office and they know who I am and they're like been to a lot of places trying to find a solution. well the problem is that the methodology of this process is to reject, refrain, refuse, delay, um, and not acknowledge me in any concrete way. And the whole time I'm a vulnerable person who is prone to suicide. Now, this is an ethical dilemma because I am on a disability pension. I've also got a public profile and I am suffering terribly and needlessly. It's not just innocuous ignoring of me, it's pointed attack. It's malicious, it's conscious, and it aims to desecrate me in every single way that they can. I, I, I don't even know what I've done wrong. I'm beside myself. Now, I run a business, my website name is my business. I actually, like I have done for 25 years, look after people in the community. The one time I needed help, I didn't get it. And not only did a, a conspiracy was born out of that, but um, I suicided in um, January, March this year in a hospital because I was systemically oppressed and abused for so long. Now, this is 
a conspiracy to murder and or manslaughter at least and I have been rejected not only from the health complaints commissioner but from the mental health complaints commissioner who I caught as being double agents for the hospital protecting their interests and who was a lawyer and can I just finish and, and who um and then I went to the ombudsman who found that this fatal injury that was lethal if they hadn't have found me I'd be dead was covered up by the ombudsman and there was no issue to be seen and I have um I have, hang on, let me get my thoughts together. So I, oh, I complained to the hospital, of course, and just asked for a simple conciliation that we may at least acknowledge the systemic oppression that ended in my death in their hospital. I mean, I could sue them, but I, I can't get a lawyer because I'm blacklisted. There is a, I don't know how they do it. Look, my former partner was an ASIO agent and he swore to ruin my life and I don't know what I'm involved in. All I know is they're extremely successful in turning every single person against me. I'm a good person. I have a human rights award and a public profile. I've worked in the public domain and I'm a public servant. Now, I have tried to get work cover for a psychological injury because of a sexual abuse thing. But the magistrate, I didn't know at the time, said I was doomed to fail. That's colourful language from a magistrate with a sexual abuse survivor. Later, I, wait, wait, can I, just, can I just, just, just have a little rant? So later I found out I'd been... F yeah, sure, sorry. Sorry. Well, well, I'm speaking under a pseudonym at the moment of Baron Dodger. Right. Baron Dodger. Um, you've got my right email address. I'm sure you could find out who I am. Pun. B a r r a n, d o d g e r. I just like to do that for my protection for the moment because, as soon as you find out my name, whatever powers that are will instruct you to not acknowledge me. And I very well, I mean, I haven't got even $5 at the moment. I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't want money. I've been framed as an extortionist. Um, but the oppression that, 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 that is so, it's, it's fierce and it's systemic. And it goes from the ombudsman to the local coffee shop. Now, even friends who I get in contact with, um, they're contacted by someone and they're told something. I don't know what. I'm framed. They, they stay away. The irony is that I had a um, psychosis in my early 20s and thought the secret police were after me. But years later, I was with a partner and David Irvine comes to my um, exhibition. So... And framed by my former partner and the crimes he's committed that I know about, which I cannot, for the life of me, report to police or federal police because ASIO are protecting his ass. Now, I'm a good citizen. I have spent the best part of 25 plus years in advocacy and doing it via altruism to help other people. All I'm asking for you is to please, please acknowledge me and please give me a life free from persecution. I can't stand it anymore. I said to the policewoman the other day, only last week, why is this happening to me? And she knew exactly what was going on. And I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I've done. I forgive everyone else. I just want a simple life. What the system is doing to me is paramount to torture. That's what it is. I can't, I've lost millions of dollars. I don't even want millions of dollars. All I want is a life I can live with my dog in a house for, free from persecution. Now, I want to say that Comcare's rejected my email address by Paul Fowler. 
Paul Fowler was the old head at WorkSafe who refused to acknowledge my um, asking for a, um, a rebuttal to his rejection. And anyway, they rejected me, but he used to be the old head there, didn't he? And he's a lawyer. Now, in the whole decades-long advocacy journey I've been through and everything that's happened, I have not had one advocate stick up for me. The Mental Health Legal Centre is against me. The Mental Health Complaints Commissioner has cooked. Um, the, um, the Human Rights Commission, they reject me. The Australian Human Rights Com Com Commission had a conciliation over a superannuation discrimination issue. And it's like they're setting me up to fail. So they rang me up and just handballed it to the other team. They don't want to do it anymore. I go, what actually are you doing? You, you're just giving them a million dollars. Like, how can they, we agreed to a conciliation. How can they just pull out? I, I'm being set up to fail and and people tell me to move on. But how on earth do I move on when I'm being attacked like this? I'll give you an example just recently. After I came out of hospital, my business email, uh, my, my professional email, my nat real name, is attached to a website, a com.au website. That website has been going for over 15 years. I've been collecting evidence to present to, as a whistleblower thing and without notice and the day before I didn't realise my computer's been maimed and all the files disappeared and attacked and um, the, the, the company which is a smallish company that hosts all my websites and, and the data and the emails my intellectual property and all my business dealings and all of my agency and reports for clients that I look after Without warning, they just emailed me and said, oh, you've been rude to our staff and we don't, you've been really conspiratorial <laughs> and no shit. And, um, and we've intentionally gone out of our way to delete all of your emails, all of your um, backups, and you are no longer our customer. We've blocked your email. You can't get back to us. Goodbye and good luck. Now, I'm consistently forced to go to ombudsman's. I went to, of course, business.gov.au. They didn't want to know about it. I went to business.gov.au. They didn't want to know about it. They said go to the small business and um, family ombudsman. So I went there. They rejected me. I went to the telecommunications ombudsman. They rejected me. Whatever is happening in the world, of, of Australia, I must be a really important person. I don't know why, I'm just a dude, you know? I'm already suffering persecutions of um, guilt and complex and stuff to do with my mental illness, but now it's real. Um, it's like reality's imitated art, you know? And, 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 and Michaela Cash, she, she runs Comcare, that's in her portfolio and she runs AFCA as well now AFCA over years years and years have denied me over a million dollars in settlements and stuff that they're running me into the ground they're denying me prosperity agency a voice my life I am being destroyed I've already been killed and they I don't see why they won't kill me again that's how serious it is I can't tell police Can this. Yes? So, you've told me a lot about the things that have concerned you and the experiences you've had and the, um, being blacklisted by various places. I want to ask you, what brought you to the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security? What is it that makes you think that ASIO, for example, is, has any role in this? Well, I was together with a former partner who was um, an ASIO agent. His boss was David Irvine. And um, his life was very secretive. It, it, was a rela it was a gay relationship and it was one that was based on my financial desecration and financial control and sexual slavery. On the surface, it looked like we were happy but it was good, he kind of tricked me in a malicious way of 
being on a pension, which I was, and he was earning like three, four hundred grand a year. Now, while he was feathering his nest for five years, I was depleting my nest egg. He left um, me homeless and he ran off with over a million dollars in super. And I also have knowledge that he admitted to me that he was um, involved in murders and um, drug trafficking and all this other stuff, including embezzling over a million dollars in a tax haven um, and then was caught. But ASIO gave him a slap on the wrist and he was fined by the tax department. I have begged the police to look into this so he can be found out because when that happens, it, it, it will be known that he owes me some separation, which is a, a, a legal principle. He, he can't just deplete someone coercively of everything and leave them homeless and leave them. That's, that's what, that's what, and the only other thing is, I don't know, I don't know much about intelligence and stuff. I don't even know quite what your agency does apart from inspect individually all the other agencies. However, I'm not sure if anything's independent because it's all under the same umbrella. I mean, if it's .gov.au, is it going to be cooked for me? I mean, I've told you... Yeah. No, see, this is the thing. He said to me, he threatened a hitman on me and he stole my car. He stole all my white goods. He convinced me to give me the last of my money. Uh, he was a com compulsive, pathological liar and sociopath. That's how people get to these positions of privilege. You've got to be tricky. Anyway, um, look, there, there was no, I couldn't get a lawyer. I couldn't get a lawyer. He threatened me with jail because I accepted a DSP. But, but because I accepted a DSP while I was together with him. But it wasn't legal to get married. So he was justifying it in all these ways. But I actually reported the relationship. I'm willing to cop the fine or whatever it is for Centrelink if he would just give me an acknowledgement. I can't find one person, one lawyer, one agent, no win, no fee, anyone to accept a simple letter that would explain the facts and say, he owes me this much, but I'll settle for a hundred grand. And, and that to me, that to me would put me out of a whole lot of distress and it would nip it in the bud. But there are, there are some fundamental things and things that cannot and will not be exposed. That is because of the knowledge I have and the evidence I have. Pardon? No, I was on a disability support pension while I was in the relationship. And, and, so you, and you didn't declare your income. So, hang on, let me get this straight. You're, you're trying to persecute me for... No, I'm trying to just understand what you've told me. Well, can you understand the bit about the um, million dollar um, tax embezzlement? And can you understand the bit about the, um, the being present at murders? Can you understand the bit about disability discrimination and that the um, Victorian Human Rights and Equal Opportunity refuse to acknowledge any one of my complaints? Can you acknowledge so that... Is your complaint about, uh, about the fact that your former partner has done the wrong thing? You, you, excuse me, you're kicking the can down the road. You asked me why I thought ASIO was involved. That is why. That's the end of that question. Right, okay, can I just ask a, a, a simple question? I'm a member of the public. You've clearly, I'm not lying, like 
all of these agencies from under national portfolios are pitted against me, you must agree. Now, why is that? Well, can you find out? Well, again, I would need to know your true name um, to be able to identify anything, you know, that any agency has gone. If you are telling, talking to me under a pseudonym, any kind of investigation that we did would identify nothing unless you choose that pseudonym. Okay, I'll tell you my name under the, um, under the, under the um, pretext that you won't demonise me for accepting $450 a week framed by the heinous crime that has killed me, killed other people, embezzled millions of dollars. Do you see what you're trying to do? On one side of the coin, now I'm the, I'm the, I'm the bad guy for accepting a pension for a valid disability, but you're ignoring the entirety of the huge, systemic, oppressive corruption that is conscious, malicious and and desecrates me in all the agencies and all the ombudsmen, all the statutory authorities, and has robbed me of millions and millions of dollars. And now I have permanent injuries. I can't see a doctor. I've got no help and I'm squatting. Your government and what you are doing is rendered me a innocuous blank refugee in my own democracy. Can you see what I mean? No one. Who's supporting you in your squad? Who's, who's supporting you with, you know, obtaining your whatever you need for your daily life? <laughs> do you need to know that? Because, you know, I could be dealing pounds of heroin on the side to do this. It's, you know, is it your business or is... I don't mean to be scolding or anything, but I'm getting a disability support pension and that is it. I borrow, beg, and sell stuff, you know. What, why, is, why is that important? I'm just wanting to know, do you have a, like, a, a, someone that you trust? I don't need to know their name, but do you have someone that you can trust? No, I don't. And that's exactly the point. That's exactly how they've rendered it, and I don't trust anyone in the world. Because I'm utterly isolated, and that's how they want me, because it's going to be easier to kill me. My name is Dr. Richard McLean. Right. You asked for my name, now you have it. I did. And I'm trying to establish... Uh, can I call you Richard? Is that Rich is fine, Richard. Rich. Dr. McLean. What would you prefer? Were you just about to say Dr. Dick? No, Dr. McLean. All oh, right, now you can call me Rich, that's fine. You got a frog in your throat, darling. You need a drink of water. No, that's all right. Can Can I just ask quickly? Can you look up my name and check it with ASIO and those other agencies and see why I'm systemically oppressed and can't report all these murders and crimes and the desecration of my business, my reputation, my friends, my family and my prosperity and freedom? I don't want preliminary inquiries. I don't want to split the hairs. I want answers. I'm a desperate, desperate, desperate man.
Well, I think it's illegal to kill someone out of a conspiracy, don't you? I think it's illegal to cover up crime. I think it's illegal that a member of the public can't go to his local police force and not be prejudiced. I think it's illegal that um, I can't go to the Victorian Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission because they refuse to hear one thing I say. I think it's illegal that Paul Fowler from Comcare has rejected me and it goes under a... Um... Pardon? But, 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 but ASIO's conduct, ASIO are impervious to the law. I, to, I just told you that a, 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 the CEO of the hospital I had a fatal injury in rejected me to the street to squat. And I didn't see a psychiatrist. I only saw one twice in, a, in nearly 11 months. That is more than a bad public mental health service. That is someone with utter disregard and disdain for a person who has already been framed before he got there. Now they killed me. I can't report that to the police. That's a crime. And if ASIO uh, above the law that they can't, in, they, they are impervious to investigating a systemic oppressive conspiracy that's ended in a member of the public's death, then I'll be a monkey's uncle. So do you want us to look into your concerns? Yes. Well, it depends. I choose not to answer if I don't want to answer. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. So normally what we ask people um, is to uh, provide additional personal information to make sure that if there are two people called Richard McLean, we know that we're looking at the right one, not the wrong one. So normally that's done by getting your, your date of birth and your place of birth and that can help us make sure that any information we find can I just ask, who are you employed under? Are you a .gov.au body? Yeah, the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security, so you can look up that website. Yeah, I have. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm just questioning um, why you aren't uh, so disturbed by the lack of justice and the oppression that I've obviously sustained that he's aimed to desecrate and kill me, and why you... Um, you know, innocuously as if that's no drama, a, a seeking in in a really flattened effect way, no soul, um, w what it is you need to investigate. And, and framed by that, you're with the government. So if I've been cooked by the government and on some kind of blacklist, why wouldn't you be complicit in um, kicking that can down the road as well? Yeah, no, 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 I, I understand that, but you didn't answer my question. I, I asked if there is a conspiracy to maim and destroy me in Australian, in Australian government to, from... Where, where does it go? To, where's the top? I don't even know. The Attorney General or what? So we don't look for conspiracy. We, we look for facts. So it's a fact that there's a conspiracy. Okay, I have I have documented that explicitly to the best of my ability, and I am framed. So when you say you've documented it, is that something you can forward to our office so that we can have a look into it? Why can't you just get my name, date of birth, and check with the agencies and report back to me? if there is something there that is um, the reason I'm oppressed from all these things. So I can get your name and your date of birth and look into uh, the things that you've, the claims that you've made. Um, and they're not claims, they're facts. No, that's okay. We, we, uh, part of our process is to call them claims because we like to see what's on the other side as well.
Have you got your big supercomputer in front of there for me now? Can you look, look me up now? I don't know, I could. Oh, go on. Rich, Richard McLean, born in Dandenong, 8th of April 1973. Just tell me what it says there, if you can. Because I reckon the big black sticker's going to come up for a red mark. Well, I used to have an email address, but of course the company that ran my website, which is also my ABN and my valid business um, in Australia, has um, absolutely desecrated my email and ruined my entire digital online identity, of which I've already reported to you that I went to business.gov.au, I went to the small family and business ombudsman, and I went to the administrative appeals tribunal and I'm framed and cooked by every lawyer or litigation agency I've ever tried to get in contact with. I must be How some kind of like famous person. How would you like us to get back to the if you, if you, you re, If you reply to uh, the email address richarddrawsstuff at gmail.com, that will get to me. Richard? Yep. D-R-A-W-S? Yes. Stuff. And then S-T-U-F-F? At gmail.com. Can you just send me through an email now so I can acknowledge that? I'll do that in a minute. When we're putting the rest of the I'd prefer you do it when I'm on the phone so I can get a, an acknowledgement. So it's um, here. Well, I, I can't do that. It'll take me 10 minutes. I'm oh, okay. Well, I've heard that a thousand times. Things that I hear all the time are, it's outside the area of expertise. We don't investigate that authority or agency. And also, um, we'll get back to you and we will call you. That's how they kick the can, maim, delay, and um, kick the can down the road to extend the amount of time that I suffer that I may kill myself. Because you know what? I'm much less of a burden if I kill myself than if... I got justice for all my human rights abuses. That is systemic and conscious and I can prove and I will. And I don't, I don't, I don't, my conscience is clear. Like I, I, I may have made mistakes. I forgive myself, but no one deserves this kind of persecution for any crime. Yes, it has. I've been vilified in the media. Do you know when it started? Well, um, going back, I, I wonder. Uh, first of all, I was sexually abused, um, which was covered up by a magistrate. I didn't know why. Another time, I was savagely beaten up when I came to the defence of a public person and the vocat pinned me with the crime. I didn't know why. Um, then... The sexual abuse stuff happened in childhood. I had a homophobic family. And in addition to that, um, I lost my virginity, which was actually really consensual sex at the local police breakup. And I had my first psychosis after that because I'm um, not heteronormative. And I didn't know how to react. I had a mental illness. I was distressed. And it created a guilt complex because of the nature of um, a sexual experience that was consensual. So in my subconscious mind, I think that I knew I was abused. So I thought I was an abuser or some type of, you know, rapist thing. And I can tell you now that I've been framed with pedophile posts. I've been framed with, um, I actually hear voices. And there is a huge angle of whether they are real or whether they are not. So I don't know if it came from right back then. And I don't know if it came from reporting that in a book that was had a Human Rights Award and Sane's Book of the Year. And um, it um, exposed in a very um, courageous way um, my grievances with... You know, it was regretful sex, but it was consensual sex. And I have a, a complex about that, but it was almost designed like that. 
And now I realise that people can design your life if it's systemic enough and if you've been victimised enough and if you've been scapegoated enough and if you have been vilified enough and victimised and shamed, rejected, ostracised and even killed. And now that I'm dead, it, 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 it's not enough for them. It's not enough that I, that I died. The hospital CEO baited me to, um, after the ombudsman said there was nothing wrong with my murder, that he would, um, he, he baited me personally to sue him directly for everything. And then they apologised, not for the systemic oppression and the malpractice and the giving of the wrong medication and all that kind of stuff, and for an agreed illegal contraband contributing to their human rights, but he um, he apologised for giving me hospital property that was a broken toilet brush that was given back to me in my luggage. That was the original thing I tried to use to slip my artery open, and the apology was audacious in its um, level of... Um, um, protection from the law and it was a, a brutal slap to my face and this is the systemic opinion that people have of me in fact the office of the chief psychiatrist said to me you can't kill yourself every time you don't get what you want now this is appalling and brings up another aspect where it may have come from is that I reported a malpractice case against a GP who I really liked and I never wanted anything to happen to him and the records will show that. That I um, then took that further and further the more I was ostracised but by doing that I was kind of digging my own hole because I ended up publishing a recording of the consultation and I record things because I'm a kooky man and I also do it because I've got a poor memory and I also do it because I'm paranoid. And I'm also doing it because I had to reality check that I was speaking the same language because I was begging for help that I was suicidal. My friend had killed himself and I was isolated. And that went on and on and on. That silent, that recording was silence. And I've since found out, not that I knew, that it was, uh, it's, it's permissible in a court of law under section 1999 of the Surveillance Act. So there is a systemic conspiracy that happened I don't know at which point it came from, but on the opposite side of the coin, I'm a very public person and I've got Sane's Book of the Year, I've got a Human Rights Award, I've actually spoken in Parliament and I've actually spoken hundreds of times to, to, to thousands of people, H tens of thousands of people. I've been on TV, radio, all that kind of stuff. I don't know why so much conscious or unconscious bias and prejudice was placed on me as a scapegoat to be sent out into the wilderness and die. But the scapegoat archetype has some amazing resilient skills and they can usually see through people's bullshit really fucking clearly. And the way you've just um, spoken to me with obvious crimes that a police matters, that I'm sure your agency has a methodology to, to treat murder um, and refuse to act but just want my partner's name and you know if I was on a DSP like I can absolutely see that you're complicit in the conspiracy of the movement that will, will further oppress me that's my opinion I'm, I'm yet to be proven wrong but you still ask me for it though Even if, it, even if that wasn't in the picture that bit, how could you not investigate it anyway? Well, we, can't in, we can investigate bits of what you've said, but um, without your partner's name... Yeah, but, but just leave him out of it for a minute. Why can't you investigate my killing if it's come systemically and oppressively from all, all agencies of government, including up until Michaela Cash and also Greg Hunt, the National Health Minister?
See, what you're doing is you're aiding and abetting the movement to elongate my suffering. Yep. So I don't know if you're able to check that and see if you received it. Yep, okay. The reason I... Did you receive uh, Yes, I did. And it says, you requested we investigate the conduct of your former partner who was nausea officer. No, I didn't. You asked me where this came from, and I said it would probably might have come from that genesis point. I, I told you that one of the injustices that I've gone through, which is systemic and I've been framed by, is not be able to get justice for um, getting a separation. I, I didn't specifically ask that you investigate him. That's incorrect. Okay. No, that's fine, but um, but but please don't put words in my mouth. Like this is framed by all of him, and he's still threatening me to this day. Yep. Now, all I want is a small amount of grace that I can live my life in peace. That's all I want. I could I could take if if this was acknowledged publicly or to the media, I could take the whole country down just about. Now, I'm a powerful person because I don't take bullshit and I am proud and my superpower is resilience and I have an ethical perspective on things. I can tell by um, you being a public servant and you absolutely not invested in the injustices and the hurt that I've been through and the oppression and the shame of sexual abuse and the injustice of it being covered up and my absolute chronic illness which I have no doctor for. I'm framed by APRA, NHPO PC, IVAC, the Victorian Inspectorate, the Ombudsman, the National Ombudsman. You get the idea, right? I thank you. I don't need praise. I need money. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I'm sure you don't expect you're selling them, are you? Yeah. No, art is dead to me because I was used, and it, it's a, it's an awful life being an artist. Never be one. But you you either are or you aren't in life. I I am sad to say that I oppress and um, I reject that entire aspect. A because I've got no time, B, because I've lost all faith in humanity and beauty, and C, I can't sell them because my reputation is so systemically and dramatically and tarnished in such a um, conscious and malicious framing of me that no one would be interested anyway. I wish you were impressed by the vernacular and the clarity in which I express this injustice that's happened to me and I'd really go low down on the praise of the art and you know if you want to praise me maybe on my resilience to this oppression that you are in a very important and certain position that you can stop. The only reason I, I mentioned that was because you asked me where this genesis of the oppression might come from. And because I know so much about him, he, and he's protected by ASIO, I wonder if I'm framed by that, um, or a red flag comes up with any agency, as I've found out only in hindsight as I look back upon my life.
Can you please just look me up? Are you across the um, the police records? No. 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 Am I? I, I I believe I haven't done anything wrong. Um, I, they are going to either. This is I I tell you now, they're not satisfied. I am dead. The, in, indeed, the persecution up to notch. Now you are in a very very important position to be able to stop this happening to me and give me a peaceful life and a, a public interest just goes disclosure, which is okay, obviously. Leave it with me. Leave it with me. I'm going to have to go now, but leave it with me, and I'll be in touch. All right. Okay. Can you give me a time frame? Can you give me updates along the way? Because I'm, I'm begging, Dale. I'm up, there's hitmen after me. I might be killed in the meantime. I'm not sure what we can do, but I will uh, put, I'll make a note of your concerns and that you're interested in being updated. So we'll do that as much as we can. But I have to finish now, so I'll say goodbye and we'll contact you soon. Okay. All right.